Witness the creation of fear. Here's your look at the Hayatoi's exquisite mini Alien Covenant Xenomorph. The crew of a colony ship bound for a remote planet discover an uncharted paradise with a threat beyond their imagination. Exquisite Mini is a new stand series for a 118th super articulated action figure line from Haya Toys. To get this review started, we're going to measure off to the top of the Xenomorph. There we go. It's a smaller figure, as to be expected. We've had a look at many of the Hayatoi releases, and they're really small, statured characters. So the Alien Covenant Xenomorph from the Exquisite Mini lineup stands at a slightly smaller 4.7 inches, which translates centimeter-wise to being 11.9, about 12 centimeters tall. Wanting some size comparisons? Well, there is, even though it's from a different film. Move over the Xenomorph. Here is the Elder Predator from Predator 2. I happen to use this as a size comparison because they're both made, both produced by Haya Toys. Just getting the Predator to stand properly. This one ankle is a little troublesome, but there's a size difference between the two. In fact, actually, if I bring them a little bit closer, you can see that the Xenomorph, depending on how you angle its legs, is a little bit taller than the Xenomorph, than the Predator, the Elder Predator that we had already looked at. The figure comes with a display stand, slightly different than the display stands that we've gotten with the Predators. The Predator actually had more of a kind of muddier terrain. This is a graded flooring that comes included with the Xenomorphs. It does basically tab the exact same way, though. You can see there's slots on either side along the top there as well, too, on every single side. And then you get these little attachment tabs. They're kind of like the letter T. And they go on one side, and then essentially if you had extra additional bases, you could then connect them all together. Now one thing you probably are asking yourself, maybe I would have asked the same question, is there's the alien, the uh, alien on the one side, the predator on the other side. Do they actually connect together? Well, the answer to that is yes. We're going to go ahead and take those eye-shaped connectors, take them on both sides, there we go. And you can see that you can connect the two together. This lends itself to a little bit of creativity when it comes to the way that you want to display it. Say, for example, you kind of want the departure from the graded flooring into more of like a, a kind of muddier terrain, even though it's not, I'm sure it's not actually mud, but it's just the kind of texturing that it conveys. You could actually connect multiples of these in various different designs to have yourself a much larger diorama that doesn't actually have to have the exact same texturing. The only problem with the display stand that they come included with, well, the Alien comes included with, is it does come with a peg, but unfortunately the figure itself doesn't come with any peg holes. You can you see, really, on the underside of its feet, there are no peg holes anywhere to be found. So really, a lot of the time, when you are ready to balance this guy, you actually have to just balance it off of the feet that are on the bottom of the figure. And the little peg here really won't come in much handy. One thing I hope that they could have done for maybe potentially future releases is for the alien figures, instead of actually having a connector point like a peg, which clearly serves no purpose here, what if they actually had replaced it with a clamp, like a little C clamp, in which you could actually plant the figure down and it would just sit inside a little clamped wedged groove. This certainly would help aid to stand the figure upright because really, again, the nature of the Xenomorphs, they're a very spindly type character. Um, it really is hard for them to stand already. To give us a display stand that also has areas that are missing additional flooring, because again, you really only have the graded flooring here, it also adds a little bit more problem when it comes to the figure standing on top of it. So maybe something that they could consider for future releases, like putting in like a little wedged groove, something that you could fit the figure atop of, and it would just basically hold it in place. The other accessories that come included with the Xenomorph is some interchangeable hands. 
I want to show you what the hands currently look like on this one. Uh, we'll find a like for like. There we go. Uh, you can see that the two hands, this one isn't that much different in all honesty from the one that was already attached to the socket. You can see that it's very identical in fact. This one on the other hand, on the other hand, if we put the two side by side, you can see that there's a little bit of a slightly split on the four fingers, grouping them by twos. Actually, it kind of looks like three, three, two, and then the thumb down below the thumb is a little bit further down as well. But again, there's really not that much difference between them. To change out the hands, you gotta be really careful. Uh, they are small, small pegs. You can see right there, that's a small peg to deal with. To attach the hand, you wanna be very careful when you're putting that back into place. And that's all the accessories that come included with the figure. Now, discussing the Xenomorph here, it's a really nice rendition. Again, answering the call that I would have made, hello, hello, ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Yes, hello, childhood. This would have been a childhood wish of mine to have gotten a three and three quarter inch or the equivalent of that scale for a Xenomorph. We eventually now get it with the Haya toys. So they're kind of answering the call I'm sure many of us make as younger kids now growing up as adults, kind of wishing that we could have gotten three and three quarter inch, or again, about the scale appropriation to like our little GI Joes, for example. Uh, the Xenomorph from the Xenomorph from Covenant, Alien Covenant, is a little bit different than the alien we would eventually see in later films. Well, earlier films, but later in chronological order, of course. The torso is probably one of the more obvious things, much wider than what we would get proportionally to the head. As you can see, the head, the torso does seem like it's a little bit wider by contrast. Some of the other things too noted is the fact that the head is a little bit thinner and it's a little bit longer. The tubings, as best as I could wait to describe them, are not as clean. They're a little bit more jetting out, a little bit more, a little, uh, not quite the, not quite tubing that sticks straight up. It's kind of really hard to describe it. It's kind of as if the they're like little vines that are ex kind of growing out to the side here rather than straight out, which we'd normally get with the regular xenomorphs. The detailing on it is fantastic. The mouth does open and close, and there is a little smaller jaw on the interior there. Like I said, it's a much longer top head area. You can see there's some additional lining that they've added to the very top here. It's a neat looking figure, if not for the fact that it's a little bit more tr troublesome um, when it comes to displaying the figure because he just has a tough time standing. Luckily, the one aiding thing to assist with getting the figure to stand is the fact that the tail is a wire frame. Thank goodness for the fact that the figure has a wire frame tail, because if not for that, that really would be a, a, a ceiling problem. Uh, for this figure to properly stand. Luckily, with the tail being adjusted, you can kind of use the tail just to kind of balance it. Helps as a, to serve as a balancing point for the figure. It still is a real problem for the figure to get properly to stand, but luckily the tail does come in handy, immeasurably. Usually when it comes to people displaying their xenomorphs, they usually will like angle the feet back, for example, and then kind of angle the toe forward. You can still pull off this effect, this feet, if you will, uh, with this particular figure. But again, any bit of posing that you have when it comes to limiting then additional footprints that this guy can now have or not so much have, now it's becoming even more of a problem when it comes to displaying the figure. Again, that tail is gonna come in considerable amounts of aid here to get the figure to properly stand. Um, that is that is the only thing that I have issues with when it comes to this, these figures is they're difficult to stand. This particular figure is really difficult to stand. Normally, I have problems with the Xenomorphs standing anyways when it comes to larger 7-inch variety figures. I mean, again, you don't have much in the way of a footprint. And generally, aliens don't stick don't sit flat on their feet like this. They often sit on their toes, kind of propelling them forward. Well, again, this comes into a big of big problem when it comes to displaying the figure because you really don't have a lot of footprint space for the figure then to stand on top of. This is, again, something that maybe they could fix for future figures because then they could use the stand with a little bit of a clamp. Like even if it was, I mean, this is not obviously what I'm talking about, but even if it was something like this, 
where you could have tabs had a little opening there on this side you could then have fit the foot into that and it certainly would have helped aid in keeping everything standing upright again that's a my, really my only problem with this particular figure he's very spindly his arms are very long and going back and kind of watching the original alien covenants i know many people don't really care for some of the prequel spin-offs uh, for the alien films but um, i did notice though that the alien does look of course different than the xenomorph would look later into the films or again chronologically later into the films um, not only is the torso longer but it also seems like the arms are a little bit longer as well this plays even more so when you start looking at the smaller scale version of this figure because once you shorten off the legs in a fashion that you think is accurate to the way that the aliens would naturally stand it does become more apparent that the arms are very long so you may want to just kind of bend the elbows a little bit just to kind of reduce the length that the arms are appearing as love the head sculpt again love the profile of it seems a little on the wide side but i think that's fairly accurate to the way it looks in the film it's got some great coloring though the coloring much like most alien releases is kept minimal mostly made up of and it from a distance it actually kind of reads more like all black but when you look at it closely you can see it's actually more rather browns than it is blacks the panel lining of course is black and it fills in all the little areas brings out some of the popped details there but primarily it looks like the paint on this guy is more brown than it is black again i love the head sculpt body's very detailed the tail not only is it an aiding thing for the figure but the tail is very nicely sculpted there as well again i really don't have any problems with it other than the fact it has a tough time standing it becomes a problem like i said for taller figures you can imagine how much more difficult it is for a smaller figure i kind of wish that the display stand could have been more of an aid because i'm relying so much on the tail to kind of keep this figure standing upright but let's run through its posability because it does actually have a fair bit for its size the head rotates all the way around there's a ball joint happening right there but then there's also a secondary ball joint right there it's a little harder to kind of get to but there's a secondary ball joint in there nonetheless the front jaw does open and close it's a little loose on this figure but it still stays shut it doesn't drop open when you don't want it to drop open the arms move forward and back via a ball joint there's a hinge joint happening there in the elbow which also allows the forearms to rotate and the hands also to rotate they have a hinge there and a hinge of course in the elbow upper torso ball joint the legs as you can see hopefully you can see it are on a ball joint so they move forward back and out bend at the knee double bend on the knee the legs also rotate there there's a hinge a hind leg hinge and there's also a, a pivot point a hinge joint there in the four toes or the five toes i guess there's now six toes there um, again really nice figure i really like the designs and the uh, the amount of detail that Hyatt Toys puts into their pieces. Thank goodness again that the tail aids so much to balance off the figure because unfortunately like the display stand doesn't really come in handy. Aesthetically it looks great on the graded flooring but I wish actually it could make use of the fact that you know you if you could get the figure to stand properly on it with maybe some assistance somewhere on the base itself that would certainly come in handy. Still either way though really liking the look of this figure never have i really appreciated a tail in a xenomorph figure until now this exquisite mini is very much that exquisite but it does have an awful tough time of standing upright take already for the fact that you've got a spindly character by design now trying to get it to rest itself only on its toes can be a pr pretty tricky feat no pun intended luckily all the weight is sitting on back of the tail the tail is really doing all the work right now keeping the figure upright Maybe for future releases, Hyatt Toys might consider working the display stand in such a way that it, like I said in this review, they could put like clamps or something in the base bottom so that it can help hold the figure upright. Because if not, again, for the tail, the figure would be falling all over the place. Some nice details and nice overall executions done to the Hyatt Toys Exquisite Mini Xenomorph. Kind of wish it could have had some more accessories to it. The hands 
sort of seem like something that's already on the figure. I don't get why there's a secondary pair of hands other than just having some additional accessories. Still nice work from Hyatt Toys, and I like the fact, finally, we've got ourselves smaller scale uh, xenomorphs that can pair well with your G.I. Joes. I just use G.I. Joes because that's the only real three and three quarter inch line I can think of, unless all of a sudden you want to be pairing the xenomorphs against the Jedi. Oh, that's pretty interesting as well. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking up any of these new Hyatoy releases, some good news is you can find them now at your local comic book store. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive than regular retail releases, but I think the trade-off is you get some really super detailed pieces. A little bit more trickier to stand in the case of the Xenomorph here, but it's still fantastic pieces nonetheless. Today we were having a look at the new High Toys Exquisite Mini. This was the Alien Covenant, and this was the Xenomorph. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to yet hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Certainly more videos will be coming your way as well. If you also want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hyatt Toy reviews, there's also a playlist just for Hyatt Toys. Feel free to check that out and watch at your viewing pleasure. We're going to have a look at some other Hyatt Toy upcoming releases, so stay tuned for those as well. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.